Welcome back everybody to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. So guys, I've been sitting here looking at my drives and I'm like, why do I have red dots on them? I'm pretty sure that we've been taking care of all of our different resources that we're getting loads of and putting them into barrels and whatnot, right? That's what I was thinking. And then I started looking around the base a little bit and I realized that this guy back here has been running for like, I don't know, months at this point. I don't even remember when we set this thing up, but this was set up with the white laser lens, right? In order to mine, oh, I don't even remember. If we come in here and we look at things that are in like, uh, almost a hundred thousand. Yeah. Look at this lithium ore. I'm sure that's from having six white lenses on there. Iridium ore, rock crystal ore, dimensional shard ore, nether quartz ore, and then probably some of these other random ores that we have in here have been gotten through this machine. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot this thing has been running like nonstop constantly for months. <laughs> anyway, I think we could probably either just click the pause button to turn them off or we could just remove the power source entirely, which is probably what we should do. We don't need anything from this. It is just filling our drives all the time. Uh, we could completely remove it if we wanted to. I might just leave it here, but yeah, we'll just get rid of the power source and turn them off so they no longer do anything. Yeah, anyway, I just want to make sure that we weren't going to fill up our drives completely. I mean, we do have a bunch of free 64 key storage cells, but I mean, that is limited storage and eventually they will fill up if we leave things un checked so we have been working on making these different metals right we've been making these different metals so we can make the chaos plank we need eight of these chaos plank with this crazy recipe in order for us to make a creative chest and once we have the creative chest we can put any item in there and then extract unlimited of said item right so that's going to be pretty awesome the next metal that we have to work on is this bear hunting metal and we don't have to worry about all of these different things. In fact, we have six out of nine of those different things already made. So one of those was cherry. One of those was 4,096 ME gas storage components, et cetera, et cetera. So the three things that don't have EMC that are difficult for us to make right now, we need a thousand thorium ingots per item. We need pink slime ingots. This one might uh, require. Okay. So that's a thousand items as well. And the thing about the pink slime, there is no other way to make it other than using the fluid sieving machine. So we can't like go crazy and like make blocks and animate it or anything like that. We do have to use the sieving machine. And then there's also the draconium seeds that we're going to have to make. And draconium seeds are used, or are, I'm sorry, are made on an advanced crafting table. Yeah, I don't actually know how many of these that we need per item for these different gears. 1,000 draconium seeds per gear. Wow. Okay. Um, so pretty much the only way for us to get these seeds is to craft it using this method here. So that means we're going to need eight draconium blocks per seed. So that's 8,000 draconium blocks per gear. Uh, these under ingots, those are EMT, those are fine, and some premium essence, we have been dealing with that recently, in fact, I think we have a whole bunch of supremium, yeah, it's the first, it's, is that the first on the list? It is the first on the list, check it out, 9.5 million supremium essence, so I think we're okay on that, I think. Um, so those are the things that we have to work on today, and oh yeah, and then we also have to make the tier 5 crafting seed, which comes from the tier 4 crafting seed, tier 3, 2, 1, etc., right? And then this is EMC down here, but all the essence leading up to that is not. Yeah, so we got some things ahead of us. Thorium, I think this is gonna be the first one that we work on. Now there's a few different ways that we can do this. We can smell an ore to get an ingot. And in fact, we have um, the better furnace mod over here, right? Or furnace overhaul, I should say. If we look at thorium, Okay, so we have 439. If I put a stack in here, that doubles it. So we get two per every ore that we melt. And yeah, that's pretty good. But we only have 15,000 thorium ore, which means we'll get 30,000 th thorium ingots, which is still a lot. But it's 1,000 ingots per 
item, right? So that's only going to be 30 items. We're still going to need more than that. Uh, so beyond that method, there is, yeah, we can do the block method where we can spawn in blocks and then use a factorizer to split them. That works too. And then also there is casting. So we had a thing set up previously for Oscogloss or have Oscoglass, how do you pronounce it? Uh, to take the molten variant of that, put it through an ingot cast, and then get the ingots out. I think we're going to reuse that setup. In fact, if we take a look in here, we have 5.4 million of these ingots, right? Beyond what we needed, so we don't need that anymore. I did actually uh, turn this off. We had a redstone signal thing. This was detecting if I was online, then inverting the signal. Anyway, so when I was offline, it would send a redstone signal to this and like start doing the thing, but it's like super laggy. Anyway, so we can reuse this same exact setup. I think we set this up last time or the time before. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we can reuse this for that same thing. And I think that's what I want to do. Uh, so first thing we need to do is get ourselves. Is it a pipette? I can never remember what the thing is called. Uh, it's from mechanism. It's a little dropper, gauge dropper, that's what it is. I think the pipette, I think that's the name of the item that is in forestry. So a shift, left click, clears the tank, all right? So we have no more of that molten stuff. We have plenty of the ingots. We can always remelt those down if we need it. And in fact, I might, yeah, I already have a bucket in here, so we can always reset that up later. So now we need to get ourselves a bucket of molten uh, thorium which should be relatively simple to do. We'll just do it the same way. So let's grab some thorium ores. Doesn't really matter how many, like four should be more than enough. We'll throw those in there. That'll melt down into the stuff. Then we just grab ourselves a bucket, right? The bucket will go right here. And when we get the, mol the melted stuff, it'll fill this up, fill the bucket, and then everything left over, we'll just delete. All right, cool. So we have ourselves our molten thorium bucket. We'll right click it on there. We will right click a bucket back in case we need that for any reason in the future. And then we just need to get ourselves a uh, redstone torch. So this thing will be able to transmit the redstone signal. Okay, so now I will just do this for the time being just to make sure things are gonna work, which I assume they will. Yep, so we are filling up. And we're getting like, one FPS or something. Anyway, we want to make sure that's not happening <laughs> while I am actually playing in the world. Uh, we could have set this up like further away from our base and then that wouldn't have affected us much. But yeah, we definitely don't want that running while we are here. So when I uh, log out of the world, my local server will say I'm offline and then this thing will happen and it won't affect our FPS, right? Okay, so we got Thorium taken care of. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is come over to this and grab some thorium, right? Grab one stack, throw that into here, like I saw, and then all of our thorium is going to end up into this, which, why is that not working? I might have to break and replace the quantum. I need to make sure that catalyst is in there, but yeah, this happens before the ultimate catalyst. Is that the right one? Let me double check. The ultimate catalyst, the ultimate catalyst. Yeah, it might just be a thing where I have to break and replace it. I've seen this before. Okay, so we'll do that. I'll grab this, grab this, break. All right, and place this thing again. Like a so, one of those. Put this into here. I'm just gonna put one stack in. Okay, yeah, so that, it went in that time. So now they're all going in. I have no idea why it does that. It just does that sometimes. We almost have a full item. I don't even remember what this thing is making. Uh, it is making the Jacoide metal. Okay. Yeah, we almost have one full of those. Um, so that'll be pretty fast to happen once, you know, we're not around anymore. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Next one is pink slime ingot. So pink slime ingot actually... You know what? I didn't even realize this before. You know what? I think we might change our plan here. I saw the fluid sieving machine one. I didn't see this. If we get some molten reinforced pink slime, this would be much better for us to do it in the way that we're currently set up the thorium. And the thorium, since we can 
break apart blocks in the factorizer, this would be much better for that. So that way both things can go at the same time. Okay, we might make a change here, so be right back. All right, so I made the change. We're now doing pink slime through this process, and oof, that's laggy. Stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> yeah, so we can make the pink slime ingus quite quickly this way. Uh, it's unfortunate that we can't do the blocks and spawn them in, but yeah, we'll have to do that with the thorium. I didn't even notice that the uh, the pink slime ingots we were able to do with this particular method. So thorium, do we have to... Oh, that's the oxide. Oh, I have to pull out a... Uh, I have to pull out a stack from this, or we could smelt it. Mm -mm -mm. Which way, which way, which way? Let's do this. I'll press that button so we're no longer putting thorium into that. Thorium. And if we do this, and then we take that and one of those. All right, so we should get a stack of thorium over here in this interface that I can take. There it is. All right, so if I do that, can I make a block? I can make the block directly. Awesome. All right, so we can put this all back in the system. Press the button, like so. All right, and all of our thorium is now in there. Okay. So now that we have that done, all I gotta do is animate this block and grab myself a uh, mob imprisonment tool. And then I'm gonna wanna get a thing so I can rename it too. So I'll grab my dark bow. All right, so there's our block of thorium. And I need the wand of animation, which is in my pouch here somewhere. Here it is. How much durability? 16, we're still good on that. All right, boop, boop. All right, very good. So now I have that. I just want to make sure we rename it so I know what's in here. All right, so I went ahead and I took our animated block. I spawned in a few extra animated blocks of the same type, captured those. So now we got three spawners going, and I'm taking the thorium blocks, and I am putting into these factorizers, and we are currently splitting them. Mm -hmm. So all of these are filling up quite nicely with these blocks, and we're making the thorium ingots. All of these are set to insert extract on the extract. We are extracting maximum and they're set to always active. And then on this interface down here, we have the blocks of thorium being provided by this interface, right? And then we are extracting with a filter, only extracting thorium blocks. And we're doing stacks at a time on round robin. So we are always trying to put a stack into each one of these. And then we start over and keep doing that. And I believe we're making the blocks faster than we can, uh, than the factorizers work. So we are getting a surplus of blocks, which is great if we take a look at thorium in here. Yeah, we're already up to 6,000 ingots, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So this is going quite quickly. Um, I did put a barrel with infinity upgrade for both the blocks and the ingots themselves, because we are going to get a buffer of both of those. Like once, once this process over here finishes, in fact, I have this disabled at the moment. So if we press this button, yeah, all of that should go in there. And look at that. We've already made some of these metals. We're still making them. And then we should slow down here in just a moment while we wait up for the factorizers to do their business. But yeah, that's going like pretty quickly, I would say, right? That's not bad. That's not bad at all. In fact, it might even, well, I was going to say it might even be worthwhile to do that for the pink ingots, but again, we can't do that for the pink ingots, so that's not a thing. So we can mark thorium off, pink slime ingot, we can mark that off. I didn't even show you guys this, but we can take a look down here. It's the same exact setup. I just went ahead and I removed the molten thorium and replaced it with the molten reinforced pink slime, right? So this is going to do the same exact thing. All right, so we are good to go on both of those. So next thing up on our list, I guess that would be the final item so we can make this last metal here, is the draconium seeds. So that means we need to automate an advanced crafting a table because I don't think there is any other way for us to make these. Um, there might be some kind of an upgrade we could do with a phytogenic insulator to like duplicate seeds. I'm not actually sure. I guess I should take a look at that first before we go the uh, the brute force method of just making these over and over again. All right, so I was looking at these different augments and it looks like we have three of them for the phytogenic insulator. Uh, none of them provides duplicate seeds. This is a chance to not consume fertilizer, allows for trees to be grown, and this one's non-fertilized inputs are not consumed, improving automation. Provides a minor chance to not consume fertilizer. So none of those are going to help us out here. And all of these have 100% seed return. So we would never gain extra seeds from this. 
Now, there might be a thing where if I plant the draconium seeds and I break it by hand, like if we put it into a harvester thing, we could possibly get more. Uh, but I feel like just setting up an automation just to craft them is probably going to be easy enough as well. So I think that's the way we're going to go on this. Um, so yeah, these are EMC. We have a whole bunch of Supremium Essence as we saw. Draconium Blocks, that's a thing that we're going to have to spawn in because I don't think there is... Well, actually, hold on a second. Draconium. Oh, we have... Ooh, ooh. And we're still collecting those. I forgot we had this set up over here, huh? Yeah, so this is still doing its thing. Let me turn off my magnet. This is still doing its thing over here, just making Draconium Ingots, so we might be able to use that. And we won't have the spawn in blocks, especially since we can just craft them directly. Oh, this might be uh, this might be a little bit easier than I was thinking it was gonna be. Okay, um, so those are craftable. These are craftable, craftable, craftable. All right, let's set up an automation for this. All right, well, the first obvious thing that we need to do is make a recipe for draconium blocks. We have some in here, but we don't actually have a recipe for that. So we will just go ahead and do one of those. Easy. So now we can auto craft draconium blocks. Uh, as far as a supremium, we have an auto craft for that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we have an auto craft for that. Um, as far as the tier five seeds, tier five, we have an auto craft for that one. All right, so I think we should be ready to go here. So I need to make a pattern that says four Supremium Essence, what is that, 12 Ender Ingots, eight of the Draconian Blocks, and a Tier 5 Crafting Seed makes one of these. Okay, so we will set that up similar to how we have set up these other things in the past back here and see if we can set up an automation for that. Okay, so the first thing that I noticed when I went to go set up this automation, I wanted to make a tier five seed, right? And I go and click next, and it says that we're gonna need Frisian, Morganine, Garfax. Yeah, this is the same kind of issue we were running into when I was trying to make the Insanium Essence, right? We saw later on that if we took an Essence block, any of these, and we, like, for instance, the Insania, if we look at the, uh, the recipe, um, yeah, we can craft directly this into this, or the uses, we can craft this into this. So same thing with these other ones, like Prudentium, the uses for Prudentium, the block, crafts directly into the essence. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem that we have, that we don't have any recipe set up for us to do that, and if we take a look at the essence the essence blocks themselves. We only have a couple hundred, a few hundred of like the lesser ones. We have a whole bunch of the Supremium and the Insanium, but these down here, not a whole lot. So that's something that we need to fix. Now I do remember previously, I set up a whole lot of, uh, of these, yeah, Prudentium Essence, okay? I don't remember where they all are. So that says Superium, but I think, yeah, Superium Essence, that's the blue one, right? Uh, that's Supremium, we have plenty of that, Ultimate Zucronium. I think it's the one that actually says Essence on them, Intermedium E, that's gotta be one, Intermedium, and Inferium. I think that is all of them, right? So we have the green, the green, the orange, the blue, and then we already have the red and the purple. I think that's it. Okay, so we just need to start automating those, and I have this still running here, let me turn this off for a moment. One of those. So we're no longer spawning in, then we can turn off our warpy things. Yeah, very good. So I'll just go in here and just find a home for these guys. So one there, one there. I don't know if we have these blocks set up into barrels. That is something else that we're gonna have to figure out as well. We can turn the warps back on. <laughs> Let's take a look over here. Do we have these into barrels? Oh yeah, look at this. So we have Supremium Essence, Insanium, Superium. Uh, in Inferium and the Prudentium. Yeah, I think we should be good. So if I turn this all back on, do that right now. Yeah, we should be crafting all of those blocks, essence, and all of those are going up. Awesome. That's what we want to see. Cool. All right. So now that we got that handled, we need to go get rid of these other recipes that we have. Uh, and that would be over here. Uh, one of these. Yeah. 
So we are doing that with Morganine, Garfax, Imperium. All of this needs to go away. We are no longer crafting using those recipes anymore. And I don't think we have any other recipe. So let's take a look at what would be a good test one. Well, I was looking for any of the other essences, but I don't see any of the other essences in here. So yeah, we don't have a recipe for any of those. Okay. So now we can take the essence blocks. Let's clear this out and Prudentium. I guess we'll start at the bottom. So there's a Inferium essence. I don't know if we're ever going to need that one because we might have a whole bunch from our mob farming previously. So there's a Prudentium, right? Intermedium and the Superium. Awesome. All right. So we just need to throw those in there and then all of this should be relatively cheap or i guess making like the tier five seeds going forward should be relatively cheap uh, i'm just gonna kind of throw them in here we are starting to run out of space for auto crafting i was trying to keep everything like organized previously but you know with all the stuff that we've done throughout this series there's not a lot of space left okay so now if we come in here we do a tier five seed if i want to craft one oh that's much better we're not using any of those additional ingots so if I cancel that and if I say I want to make like a thousand of them, there we go. Looks like we are definitely good to go on this. All right, guys. So I think we're about ready. I just made one draconium seed using this recipe. So we're going to make a pattern. Um, I did take our advanced crafting table and I animated it like we did with the ultimate crafting table. But I never replaced that one. Advanced crafting. Let's take one of our now 28 of them and place it back. All right. So yeah, we do have an animated version of that. If we need a whole bunch more of these yellow ones, we have that under control. Um, but yeah, we have this set up. So I place the recipe in here. I click save. Yeah, I guess this says save before it says clear, right? Um, I have the config set exactly the same as these other ones. So we are not auto inserting. We are auto extracting to the south. This is off by default and this is X by default, right? So we're putting the items through the top. This interface right here is going to have this pattern in it now. And this is going to say, um, you know, all that stuff crafts a draconium seed, one of these. And then we have this set to blocking mode. That way we're not pushing in a whole bunch of one part of the recipe. And then this thing gets backed up because it doesn't have the correct items to go in spots, right? Anyway, so if I tell the system to make a draconium seed now, next start we should see all those ingredients go in here and i think it's already done yeah it's already done okay so yes we can do this now auto craftable which is awesome so next step is did i ever set this up i never set this up uh pink slime let's get that set up now before i forget so pink slime ingots these are gonna go here so we'll provide those all right so that's all set up that one didn't have a problem uh this one right here this is the last one that we need to do and this i'm going to go ahead and just right click a whole bunch of times so we get a stack in here even though we can only craft one at a time all right like so throw those in there and this the draconium seeds went right into there now we need a crafting card and once we throw a crafting card in here everything should just start working right so we should start making these things non-stop Oh, that's so good. So good. <laughs> I like it. Even though this is kind of slow, again, this is going to happen uh, between episodes. So with our release schedule, these theoretically should be done. Um, let's take a look here. Yeah, so we're making about one every second, it looks like. Maybe every second and a half, something like that, depending. But yeah, I think this should be about done by the time, at least enough of them. We only need like eight ingots. To be honest but uh this should be about done by our next episode so yeah that's really good so uh just a kind of a waiting game at this point waiting on all these things to be made um but yeah that's gonna do it for this episode next time we should be able to make ourselves our chaotic planks which is gonna be awesome oh you know what let's go ahead and get rid of this and that yeah so chaos planks should be what we do next episode oh yeah anyway guys that's it for today thank you guys for watching remember leave a like on this episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time bye bye